All instruments have personality. From the moment you plug them in, you learn what that personality is and you see if you can use it in your music. And uh, I like to think that having various instruments, when you pick up a new instrument or a different instrument, it, it makes you play the way the instrument is made. And that can sometimes inspire you to write something a little different or in a different way than you normally would. So I think different instruments can inspire different types of music. This is my bread and butter bass uh, for the last 15 years. Uh, that is the bass I played the very last note of the very last Rush concert, so that's got a bittersweet memory for me. Uh, that was one of the first Rickenbackers that I ever took on tour and play. I played from, we were just talking about it, from 1997 for the next 15 years. That was my main bass. Uh, but if we walked around this exhibit, I could tell you why I love each one of them. Uh, as the collection expanded, I was finding that uh, I was gathering a lot of stories about these instruments, like who played them, you know, not necessarily famous people, but uh, this one bass I have that's not here is a bass I found in Malaysia, and, you know, the guy played it for 40 years in this little band, and he sent me pictures of his band in Malaysia, and so I found a lot of those stories very sweet and they stayed with me and I thought they deserved to be told to, to show the sort of hidden life of, of an instrument. Uh, and so the more of those stories I gathered, the more instruments I got, I figured there, I, I should do something with this and, and share this stuff with the world. So, And what I hope to achieve by this selection was to show the earliest days of the electric bass, so from Fender and Gibson and Rickenbacker, those are the, the big three I call them, and you know, they really uh, paved the way for some of the smaller producers. So we've got instruments from that, from that early period of the 50s, and I also wanted to show you, show people that, you know, there were, at the same time in the 50s, there were instruments being made in places that maybe you people don't realize, like Sweden and parts of Italy and so more obscure producers that were making really interesting looking and aesthetically adventurous instruments. So there's some of those here too. So uh, it's hard in, with a limited space to tell the full story of the electric bass, but we tried to do uh, a shorthand version. I'm really happy with it. Yeah, I'm and uh, I'm not an easily satisfied guy. So.